who must know? And I will tell you that a, a lot of it came out of this pamphlet that I hope everyone got in the mail. And if not, maybe picked it up here at church. And the, the title of this is They Must Know. Who is they? So who is they? Who must know? Now, if you don't have one of these, I know Wayne has 10 of them. And see him after church, he'll give you the first 10 away. Welcome to him. Please take them. Jesus is telling us how much he loves us. Jesus knows the end of life as we know it will soon come to an end. And he knows all will believe in him. It breaks his heart knowing it will be goodbye to some. Jesus reminds us at the center of the universe is a wonderful place called heaven. In the center of heaven is the throne of God where God the Father sits. This is the way it is now and has been since before creation. Back when God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit created a beautiful angel named Lucifer. Yes, that's also the same place where Lucifer made a terrible mistake. Lucifer decided to live totally for himself. He ignored the facts that the Godhead was all about sharing. Lucifer thought he could and should be more important by just ignoring God's law and he became a taker and not a giver. Unbelievably, a third of the angels followed him. There was war in heaven, and the great dragon and his followers were cast out and sent to earth. And his name was changed to Satan. Now the conflict started. Man occupied this beautiful earth, and man was created with a free choice. This was, the dreadful, this was a dreadful risk and a great act of love from the Creator who loves man so very much. You know the story of Adam and Eve, sad decision making. Because of sin, God had to destroy this beautiful earth he had created with a flood to remove the world's population bent on destroying everything good. The effects of that flood can still be seen worldwide. Sin is self-destructive and we cannot save ourselves. Jesus knew the plan before creation that all would turn to sin. Someone had to die. Jesus knew only he could save us, this sinful world, from sin. So here was the rescue plan. If only Jesus could never surrender to sin, it would prove that goodness is greater and mightier than evil. Jesus knew if he would die in our place and we would accept that sacrifice and ask for forgiveness of our sins, then he could and would forgive us our sins. Only Jesus can give us the hope of eternity. Jesus knew that to rescue the human race, he would need to conquer sin and die. And he would have to conquer death. So it happened in 4 BC, Jesus left his heavenly home and came to save us. The angels bowed and sang as Jesus left. They knew and could see how much Jesus truly loves us. He became human and was born from a woman in Bethlehem. 
Jesus was not on loan. He was a gift. From that moment on, humans had a brother from the heavenly court. For 30 years, he worked as a carpenter and learned what it felt like to, to have the awful force of temptation. He got hungry. He felt the heat, he felt the cold, and days of hard labor. His main ministry would really only last three and one half years. But in that short time, Jesus gave all he had, even if it were for only a few believers. Yes, he gave it all, including his life. The human race had been deceived by the highest ranking angel in heaven. And love compelled a rescue. Jesus left us an unspoken message. He said, you can do this to me. You can nail me to the cross. But there is one thing you cannot do. You cannot stop Jesus from loving you. The grave could not hold him. The power of salvation had been proven by the mighty Jesus, our resurrection. Even death is, no te is now temporary for anyone who believes, Revelation 22, 13. Jesus declares that he is the beginning and the end. He was dead, but now he lives and has the power to unlock the grave. Now in Revelation, Jesus is speaking to us through his very dear friend, John. And in Revelation 14, Jesus gives a vision to John about three angels with advice to this end time world. Love God and give him glory, the only true God. False religion power is trying to make all Christians turn from biblical truth and believe in immortality and false commandments. If you follow the false religion and worship Satan in your mind or with your hand, you will drink the wrath of God. This is good advice to an end time church. The good news is we should not be disturbed. After all, we know what the end time is. The promise from our creator is eternal life to anyone even those who have made terrible mistakes. The Sabbath day will be a res oh, the Sabbath day will be a reassurance to God's people that they have nothing to fear because they are being judged by the creator of the Sabbath and someone who was willing to die for them. No one, no one is trapped here. That's good news. The hope of the gospel is good news and the plan is victorious through Jesus. We are God's children and Jesus is coming to deliver us from this wicked world. This is great news even to us in time, some of us new Christians. Remember the thief on the cross next to Jesus? He confessed to Jesus who he had recognized as the savior. He admitted he was a sinner. He said, I don't deserve another chance, but I'm asking for it anyway. Guess what? He got it. Jesus gave it to him. That is the first message needed for a dying world. No matter what you've done, Jesus, the great forgiver, absolutely promises forgiveness and salvation. We will see Jesus. 
John 5.22 says, My Father judges no man. It is committed to me, the Son. Jesus is our judge. Did you get that? Jesus is our judge. We are judged by our Redeemer and defense attorney. How can we lose that case? No one knows the hour of God's return except the Father God. But look around. I mean, seriously, look around. I believe we are now in the end time. It's not coming, it's now. This world will grow very dangerous. That means there is more work for us to do, us believers to do on this earth and telling all about the living Jesus. There is no more business as usual. It's time to lift up the trumpet. Jesus is coming again. Who must know? All must know. They must understand. Throughout time, Jesus has sent messengers to show us prophecy, like Daniel. Through the Bible, we know the day uh, judgment started, October 22, 1844. Many believed Jesus would return on that day. When it did not happen, it started a movement to save the 2300-day prophecy. People like Ellen White, HMS Richards, Mark Finley, Lewis Walton, Alvin Schnell have preached earnestly that God is love and he is returning to claim his chosen. Those who seriously study the Bible prophecies find the truth Jesus wants us to know. Now there is a temple in heaven which holds a massive amount of heavenly beings. Millions of angels come and go on errands from the throne at God's command. Yes, God is sitting on that throne. His dazzling light is ablaze, lighting up the universe. Jesus reviews the records of every person on her earth who has claimed salvation in his name, and he does it with Calvary's love. Us humans struggle to understand that depth of love. Jesus will be our defense attorney against all Satan's accusations against us. Jesus declares, if you love me, keep my commandments. We will often fail but as we learn to submit to heaven's love, our lives will be changed forever. Some will have a short time, even hours, to have the privilege to serve Jesus. Some of us, a lifetime. A belief in Jesus will change our lives forever. One of the beliefs in Jesus is that the great creator, he is the great creator of the Sabbath, a very special day to worship, love God and give him glory. Worship him that created heaven and earth, the sea and the fountains of water, Genesis 2. Well-meaning people will say they are honoring Jesus' resurrection on the first day of the week. They may be sincere, but that is not what God asked. Human tradition is not biblical truth. After Jesus' death on Calvary, he rested on the Sabbath. His faithful apostle Paul observed creation Sabbath and kept it. We will all worship on Sabbath in heaven, Isaiah 66, 23. Don't be fooled by humans saying they are sitting in God's temple and doing only what Jesus can do. Only Jesus has a power 
to forgive sins. Our loyalty to Jesus will make Satan furious. As earth gets closer and closer to the end, we, his people, will encounter more challenges all seeming to come at once. That's called a global pandemic. Storms, droughts, earthquakes, wars, financial disaster, a, a time of trouble such as never was. Satan will do his best to show the lost his power. The good news is in a time of great global confusion, there is a group of people who remain loyal to heaven. Here on earth, they will feel like the minority, but don't be afraid. We are the vast majority because we are on the side of the whole entire universe of heaven. We are the redeemed. We will develop a character that changes us and patience. Imagine that. The redeemed will learn that only the harmonious universe can survive. We will have complete faith in Jesus. Our scripture today, Revelation 14, 14 and 16 tells us we are the harvest Jesus is reaping. Jesus does not want one of us to be lost and promises all will have a choice for or against him. Jesus is looking for workers to tell the world about his great love. For the redeemed, there will be great joy. We will see family members, old friends, Gideon, Samson, David, Joseph, Samuel, all the prophets, and of course, we'll see Jesus. The host of the redeemed are composed of people who lived in a war zone and the host of redeemed are composed of people who lived in a war zone and often failed, but summoned faith. Faith, that is what saves us. An enduring faith that Jesus promises of grace can and should be believed. Jesus will say, welcome home faithful. Father, I can't wait to blast off. I, my prayer this morning is that everyone in this room will see your face. I want to live forever with you. Thank you for being our God and loving us. Amen.